So I'm going to talk about how uh, we run uh, web real-time applications with Django and WebSockets. So it's like meteorizing Django, basically. So I work for a company called... Huh? What's Meteor? <laughs> Meteor is a framework in JavaScript that has, that's basically all about real-time. Yeah. So I work for a company called Avera, we're a security analytics company. So, um, so our outline is we're going to define our problem, try to discuss the challenge, and then we'll talk about WebSockets and how the WebSockets fits into what, why, we, why we wanted WebSockets, and then we'll do that. Uh, I'll show them. So um, we wanted a bunch of stuff. Oops. So we want system-wide real-time notifications, kind of like Facebook, where they, poke, where they brought you about, hey, something happened. We also need to notify logged in users about status of long running processes, because we have some sort of image building and, and so on and so forth. So we want to notify them like, hey, your image is done. You can go check on it now. And we, we want this notification mechanism to be smart enough to filter, to notify the right user about the right thing has happened. So we, want this, we also want the solution to be scalable when we move to more users. Among other things, we also have charts and real-time analytics that we need to show to the clients. So preferably a real-time solution rather than a polling solution would be better for this case. So these are the packages currently available for uh, Django WebSocket support. So as you can see a lot of them uh, not, have not been updated for a while. But so after a bit of choosing here and there, we actually picked Swarm Dragon out of the rest because Swarm Dragon had the most amount of uh, mature features that we needed. A lot of them were just simply adding WebSocket support without actually adding more stuff than that. Swarm Dragon allows uh, other stuff, but I'll explain it later. Okay, so our solution is that we, the, how Swap Dragon actually works is that we actually run, Director is our Django project that we run. It connects to Tornado, which uses Redis as a message queue, which then connects to the front end using SOPJS. So Swap Dragon itself is a Tornado project that it's, it's, you use it with your Django project at the same time. So you run two servers at the same time. So we use, so this one connects to the connector, which is another Tornado application that we use to run our long running processes. And then you'll return using a REST authentication back to the uh, Django project. Okay, so I'll just go to the demo. So there's two demos, we can go to his website and see his uh, chat application. So you can just join the chat. Then you can talk about stuff, and then, and then you can talk about stuff. Okay, let's show you a more interesting example. This is the one that we actually built. So what we do is uh, we're doing application uh, app building. So I'll, do it. so I'll build an app now. So this allows us to build images using Ansible scripts. So we've got real time, real time connection between our system and the uh, fabric process that is running Ansible right now. So it's, one, so it's Copying all the stuff, building all the applications at real time. So all this works is that in the network diagram. As you can see, this is the WebSocket connection. It's currently firing on the on pole. So we have pub sub onto the model itself. So that you, when the model change, when the model is created, when any new build message is created, you actually fire off to the front end that hey, there's a new there's a new event that's being created and just pushing it to the front end and generating it like that. So we have developed some kind of like CI-ish kind of system where we can monitor like and store image the entire image building process, especially for debugging if anything happens, because image building is fairly complicated. Is there any option to write the images? Huh? Yes. I mean, everybody can write something in the terminal that we overwrite. No, this one we this one we I did was uh, <laughs> it actually runs in a separate application. Then it fires the rest upon each output for the sys out. So it's actually running Fabric onto a build server on a build server right now to build the image itself. Then it's posting back to the it'll post back to Django to tell you like okay, this new message has been created. Because I wanted like audit trail for that. <sighs> okay, so let me go back to the
So I'll just show you some of the code that's being done for the for how the Swarm Dragon actually works. So for Swarm Dragon, you actually need to you need to you need to add serializer to serialize your to serialize the, the model that you're actually doing, and you add self-published model. So this doesn't require any migration at all. You just add those two things to your to your model to, in order to enable pubsub for the model. You don't have to enable pubsub for model. You can also create routes to pubsub to specific things. So I just show my So this is how a router would look like. You set a route name. Did you zoom in? Zero. Yeah. Did you zoom in? Can I zoom in? Text larger. Oh, sorry. Uh, So this is, for example, the router that, we, that I was using uh, previously. So you set a route name, which is basically just a string that you can use, that, you, that your JavaScript will fire to connect to the back end. The serializer, they define the model. And then if you have any permissions that's required for, to, for the router to actually receive the data. After that, they just return like, OK, so for this, I require that the app image that we, they, that we subscribe to has to be exact value and personal the person logged in has to be the person has to be logged in. And then you just register the, the router. The serializer is quite quite simple. Serializer is simply like uh, if you use Django REST framework, it's similar to the, it's similar to that. So you just model the fields that you want to publish, fields that you want to update. So I won't go in depth into the API because you can just read documentation for that. So the front end front end consists of two parts. So we're doing a subscribe here. So you do a swap dragon dot subscribe. I've subscribed the route. This is the route that you subscribe to. This is the local channel that you can do, that you do. So you can have multiple local channels. So that, let's say you have multiple chat rooms. So chat, you want chat room A's messages to go to chat room B. So you set your, your channel based on whatever you want to be. So for me, I already have the I really have the app image checking when, when it's being fired off so that the app image will only fire, the message will only fire to the correct, with the, with the correct primary key. So this, the rest is just uh, if it's success or failure. After you do ch handle channel message, which is as you saw previously in the, in the network panel, that was the, it's basically like JS, it's basically JSON. And then, I, and then I parse the JSON and then type it out. So that's it. Okay. Uh, any questions? Yes? Uh, this is what so at that I believe that uh, uh, does the browser need to maintain a long-lived HTTP connection in order to get the uh, response back from the Yeah, it uses a slightly different HTTP connection. I'll just show you. So the headers is actually, it would run a HTTP connection to I don't think I can zoom. Yeah. So uh, it connects to it connects to the back end and then it returns status code 101, which is it will upgrade the connection from a standard HTTP connection to a WebSocket connection from there. It doesn't switch port. It ah. just upgrade the connection. Yeah. Um, that is what I like. Um, I obviously use the long code. Like yeah, I'm not exactly sure because uh, I'm not exactly sure how the I haven't actually tested it. I yet because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I use that not not that anymore. It's called Spartan now. <laughs> okay, so um, it's actually fairly complicated the setup. So I'll just show you. So. I'm running the I'm running a Django server here, and this side I'm running a Swarm Dragon server. I also have to run Redis, which is here. And then I'm running my other thing, which is actually building the building the building the thing. Of course, a standard build would only consists of two parts, which is your Django process and the Swarm Dragon process, which is essentially a tornado application. Yeah. 
Okay, anything else? Are you sure you didn't pick Swamp Dragon because it's so similar to a Twitter handle? No. <laughs> <laughs> What's your Twitter No, because we, we picked it up because uh, the, it, it, it had the part filtering and other things sim similar to the Django ORM. So the rest of it was sim simply web sockets added on and it didn't have any other integration of Django. How long did it take you to get this going? Uh, this took me about two days because I actually screwed up the sentry logging part. So I couldn't actually see any debug messages because you need to add tornado logging in, <coughs> on, in, your, in the base config before the error messages come up. So you said this is a Tornado application, so you have a, a full dependency on Tornado as well. Uh, well, it's Swamp Dragon is to, is a Tornado oh, app by itself. Okay. Yeah, okay. so you just install it as a you just install Tornado, install Swamp Dragon, but you need to run both servers at the same time. Okay. Yeah, so one will connect on one. Will, what Swamp Dragon is actually running on port nine 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 nine. My Django is actually running on port eight thousand. So for your for your actual live deployment. I actually ran it on port 80. Both are, both are running on port 80, but they're running on a subdomain instead. Okay. Yeah. So it, it's cleaner and you don't have so much firewall problems. Okay. Anything else? Yes. Well, how's the scale? I mean, what if you have, I always read when I, when I deal with web sockets, I always read that one server can only have like 56,000 sockets at one time or something like that. So what if you have 100,000 users, then you will have some <coughs> servers? I have no idea about the I have no idea about how, how big the scaling is gonna be because I've never actually I haven't actually had time to test it in yeah. an actual huge environment. But okay. from the author he actually had he actually posted it onto Hacker News and Hacker News actually bombarded his chat service and he stated that about six thousand is okay, but I'm not sure about for like hundred thousand or that from that size. What is the overhead in terms of data? So how much more connection to do something in real time instead of sending it to like HTTP? Through long polling, for example. Yeah, because I have seen that that was like every line was three hundred. Yeah, points. I'm pushing the I'm pushing like every line at the moment, so I guess it's not very efficient at the moment. I am actually not very sure about the overhead. <laughs> a lot of it's like a lot of this stuff is quite experimental at the moment. In fact, some dragon is not even production ready. Yeah. Is there any way to automatically compress multiple messages together? Or mm. uh, right now it's because it's subscribed to the Django model. So right now I'm creating one model every time it receives the message from the build application. So if you do a pub publish subscribe on directly onto the model, then you would receive everything that the model, every every single change that the model receives. It seems like Swamp Dragon though, like that would be a good feature in Swamp Dragon to batch updates, right? Like it could do that. Yeah, you can, you, can, so you, don't, you don't have to subscribe to a model. You don't have to, you don't have to connect your router to a model. You can connect your router to a generic router, and then you can just batch, batch it every five seconds to like batch, send, batch, send. So you subscribe to a blank router instead, instead of a model router. Yep. From an input point of view, though, there's not much benefit to batching unless each piece of data you're sending is really tiny. Because at the end of the day, it's just TCP connection. So if you don't send anything, you're wasting time because you, yep. if you send it in spikes, <coughs> it's less efficient than if you send a constant stream. Actually, uh, it, it should, they should have something like where we have the APIs, like the, um, just to batch it up so that it's responsive to the latency. So if you're on like many years old, Oh, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's TCP, you just yeah. let the lower layers handle it. Yeah, yeah but I should respond to the lower layers again. Yeah. What do you mean, respond to the lower layers? Well, it, it knows, it, because feedback is not sending yeah. it again. Uh, and you, you don't get such feedback. <laughs> when you're talking to a TCP socket, you get absolutely no feedback on congestion. That is one of the things that you, it's one of the costs of using TCP, really. And there's nothing you can do on your upper layers to. No, but you don't have the delay, so you know when it. So you know how much you have in the buffer. So you know. How sure, you can check how much there is in the buffer and how much you're going to store, but then you can just let the kernel handle it anyway. Which is arguably, no matter how well you write your code, your kernel's going to do it better. Yes, maybe that discussion is better over beer. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so uh, is there any interaction with HTTP compression? 
break it. <laughs> that was very short, no you mean Jesus or something like yeah. that? Yeah, I have no idea actually. Uh, yes. question. Uh, for Jaguar, yes. uh, can you only talk to one Swagran application? As in one connection? I'm sorry? As in one connection? Can you have more than one? Can you yes. have more than one? Subscribe to multiple routers within multiple. the same page, yes. Oh, okay. So for mine it's actually it's actually too prompt for the for this. So we actually so on top is the build messages, which is what the mess all the entire bombardment of messages that you saw previously. And finally, we have I'm subscribing to a second one, which is the image after the image has been built. Like hi, is the image completely processed? So it's doing two subscriptions on the same page. Of course, you can probably layer more. I have not tested what's the limit of how many layers can you connect at the same time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is that all right? Then. Uh, Thank I'll you. see you next week.